So if we carry on, and if I could ask Trudy to come up. <laughs> and she's going to take you through the, uh, the Scottish Government digital programmes. I would just like to welcome you all as well and echo the, the welcome that, that Colin um, said earlier uh, this afternoon. Now, I work within Colin's um, team within the Scottish Government. I head up the broadband policy team. Um, and really what I want to talk about today is our vision, digital vision for Scotland going forward into the future, kind of beyond, I suppose, today um, and, and the work that we're doing today. And really to set out, um, you know, a number of programmes, a number of initiatives, a number of things that are happening, I think, that really underpin and um, make a case for why we need an internet exchange in Scotland. Now, our vision for 2020 is that Scotland is a world-class nation. Um, and not just kind of remaining static in 2020, but be going beyond that and moving with the times. I think we know at the moment we're not, um, we're not on a par with world-class um, but certainly our aspiration um, and the work that we're doing at the moment will bring us on a, word, a, a path to world class. We have recently launched a dialogue about our aspirations for world class because we're very, very, very clear that the Scottish Government can't do this alone. Um, it needs to be a partnership. It needs to be a partnership with industry. It needs to be a partnership with other public sector organisations. We need to have all of Scottish society and the economy behind what we're trying to do because it will be a major task and a major investment and we want everyone in Scotland to benefit from that. So we recently launched Scotland's Digital Dialogue and uh, the web address is there. And I guess when we're, talk when we're looking at um, whether an internet exchange is the right thing for Scotland, we've already had some debate already this morning about whether that's the right thing for Scotland. And actually this is the kind of debate we absolutely want to stimulate it's, it's important that Scottish people and the Scottish economy are behind what we're trying to do to achieve Scotland's digital vision. So what do we mean by world class? Well, Scotland has had a strategy for um, a number of years now, and moving forward, the various different st strands still stand. Digital connectivity clearly is important. We need to have world class infrastructure that underpins it all. And, you know, we look to the likes of um, Sweden, South Korea, Lithuania and those sorts of countries in terms of what we should be aiming for. But it's not just about the infrastructure and the connectivity. It's about what people do with it. Um, and, if, and that's even more important than the infrastructure itself. So in terms of participation, it's all about people choosing digital first, having the confidence and the skills to be able to use um, and access the internet, whether they're at home, on the move, in work, and so on. Um, in terms of our economy, it's about ensuring we've we're got the right mechanisms in place to support the businesses, um, but equally that the workforce and people working in businesses um, are skilled as well. And in terms of public service delivery, it's all about ensuring that we put public services online, that they're digital, but that we're not um, it's not the digital by default position, it's the choose digital first, so that we're equipping people who are accessing public services uh, with the skills to be able to do that. So all of this in the round, it's about creating demand. We very much recognise that what drives investment is demand. Basically, you have better coverage, better speeds, you get a better internet experience. This leads to more users using the internet, which generates more traffic. You get greater innovation, greater development of applications and services by businesses. You then get an, a resultant increase in take up and demand um, through people using those services, uh, whether that be public sector or private sector services and applications, which then puts more money in the system. You get an increased investment infrastructure and we go back around the cycle again. So really, um, the demand, I think, is key, whether you're increasing the demand through investing in infrastructure, whether you're investing in the public services, whether the private sector is investing, it's all about creating that demand. So let me just talk about, then, what we're doing to try and um, create that demand. So I've already mentioned, um, in terms of connectivity, we have um, an ambitious target by 2020 to have a future-proofed infrastructure that supports any device, anywhere, anytime. 
Now, this um, is, is challenging for Scotland, given its uh, geography, but certainly this is our aspiration. And it's going to require hybrids of fixed and mobile networks across Scotland, um, and very much the kind of the perspective that people can connect, they don't actually worry about connecting, it just works. That's really our aspiration that we're going, that we're aiming towards. Recognising that this is a longer term plan. Um, we're not going to deliver it tomorrow because it needs, it needs the right partnerships. Um, I mentioned before that the government will not be able to do this alone. We need the right partnerships with industry. We need the right partnerships with other public sector partners and, and with society. So it will be a longer term plan. Um, and we want to make sure that we don't just jump in and uh, grant fund organisations to deliver the infrastructure. We want proper, meaningful partnerships that are sustainable in the long term. So that's the, kind of, that's the aspirations for connectivity. In the interim, though, um, because that is a longer term plan, and because we have you know, some infrastructure issues locally in Scotland just now, um, we have the Step Change programme, which really is about reducing the current digital divide that exists within Scotland between predominantly the rural and urban areas. And that's basically where the market is currently not investing, which is about 50% of the Scottish population today. So the government's making um, an investment of at least 240 million into the Step Change programme. And um, the, the targets are up on the slide really to try and get as much fibre out there as we can and aiming to reach about 85% of premises across Scotland. We have um, a target for, for local authorities because actually we're delivering this programme in partnership with local authorities. Um, and so far we've got local, 14 local authorities on board that have committed an additional 50 million into this programme as well. It's been taken forward um, through two projects, one in the Highlands and Islands, which has been led by Highlands and Islands Enterprise, and contract was signed yesterday with BT. So that's £145 million investment going into the Highlands and Islands, which um, is, is a fantastic um, achievement. It's going to be you know, life-changing for the people of the Highlands and Islands. Um, just, to, just to let you uh, some statistics that... BT will lay more than 497 miles of new fibre on land and almost 250 miles of subsea cables. So this is really fibring up the islands across Highlands and Islands. So it is a fantastic um, achievement that that's been signed. The Rest of Scotland project um, is obviously covers the rest of Scotland. <laughs> it's a catchy title. <coughs> um, that one's slightly... Uh, slightly behind in terms of uh, progress, but it's aiming to sign contract this summer, again, with the, the 2015 targets. So we're really looking to really um, improve the infrastructure locally within Scotland. And improving this infrastructure will mean that there, more, there will be more users on the internet, there will be faster internet connections, therefore there will be more traffic. In terms of the rest, in terms of local projects, clearly the Step Change programme isn't going to get to it. We're not going to get fibre everywhere through that particular programme. So we have a number of smaller local projects that we're looking to support. Um, demonstrations and pilot projects. For example, one of the pilot projects that we're working on is um, with Glasgow Housing Association. And that's looking to deliver low-cost, fast, reliable broadband within some, some of their multi-dwelling units. So that's a really exciting pilot project that's going on. And we also have um, Community Broadband Scotland, which is looking to facilitate and fund community projects within that sort of last 10 to 15% that won't get um, addressed by the Step Change programme. And we've got six pioneer uh, projects being supported at the moment. Um, really, really exciting. We've got Amanda here from the, the Begal project, which um, is close to um, coming up with its final business plan. So it's a really, really exciting time for some of the community projects as well. So we also have the digital economy. And digital economy is incredibly important to Scotland. I mean, our whole ethos is about sustainable economic growth for our country. And um, in terms of the digital economy, that's one of its our biggest priorities. We have a strong research base, 
we've got a great company base, but what we want to make sure is that we've got the right mechanisms and support in place so that they're recognised internationally and they're supported and encouraged to grow. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to have the workforce that has the right skills and the confidence to do that. And the ultimate um, goal of that is to um, attract investment, both from inside Scotland, but also to attract investment from outside Scotland. And Scotland has huge strengths and opportunities in the digital space. And these are just, these are just some of them. I mean, we're sitting in Heriot Watt. Heriot Watt has huge strengths in, in mobile technologies. We've got the Inter Informatics Forum in Edinburgh, and that's one of the largest computing science departments in Europe, um, and who are spinning out and starting up small digital internet businesses, you know, so, so quickly. It, it's, it's hugely exciting what's happening in Scotland in terms of um, cloud, telehealth, the Scottish Centre for Telehealth and Telecare, for example. We have, obviously, gaming from Dundee. Um, there's just, in terms of our research base, there's huge excitement and potential there and huge excitement and potential for spinning out companies and growing the economy from that. So again, we've got a lot of demand in terms of companies using and requiring higher bandwidth, higher traffic, um, if we can get the right support mechanisms in place. We also have um, strengths in smart systems as we move into the, the Internet of Things um, and everything being interconnected. We've got uh, strengths in big data, um, strengths in transport, energy, waste management um, systems. We've got a really, really strong cities alliance who are working together and collaborating. We've seen Dundee and Glasgow both coming up with smart city proposals. Um, and Glasgow in particular has just won 24 million from the Technology Strategy Board to become a future cities demonstrator. <clears throat> So again, and, and, and I, I mentioned those two cities, but I should also say Aberdeen has strengths in, in energy <laughs> and um, Dundee has strengths in, in gaming as well. So, I mean, there's, there's huge potential in Scotland and huge growth in terms of internet and um, the economy and how we're moving forward. But it's not just, um, I suppose, these advanced applications. We need to make sure that everyone can participate um, and that we undertake demand stimulation because ultimately that increases take-up rates and traffic as well. So we, we will have a number of demand stimulation um, campaigns that will be ongoing alongside the infrastructure investments we make through the Step Change Programme. Critically, that's important. That we can't just put the infrastructure in and then hopefully everyone uses it. Um, so we'll start to see that happen across the Highlands and Islands. And once the contract in the rest of Scotland has been signed, we will, we will see those, uh, those campaigns starting as well. There's a huge amount of work on, at the moment um, looking at online public services, um, a whole team being put in place just now, looking at the, what was the Direct Scott um, website and really making sure that across the public sector, the services that are designed are customer focused, they meet the demands of what, what people need and how they might use them. So that's happening just now as well. And um, we have a number of programmes that are supporting businesses. We, we have a statistic in Scotland where 25% of, of SMEs are not even using the internet. So we've got programmes across the Highlands and Islands and about to start one in the rest of Scotland, really trying to upskill businesses so that they use the internet better, they use it properly, and they're really skilled in terms of understanding what they can do and how that can help grow their business. All of what I've just mentioned supports the virtuous circle. We're investing in infrastructure that will provide faster access. It will also provide better geographical coverage. This will increase traffic. More traffic, we've got a bigger market out there. Hopefully makes Scotland more exciting. Um, and also creates a, a, a Scottish market. We can see Scottish services being developed, Scottish applications being developed by Scottish companies um, and, and Scottish uh, academics. And it also allows um, greater consumption of, of commercial and public online services. So I would say from the government's perspective, an internet exchange for Scotland is a key component 
and actually it can put us on a path to world class right now. Um, John will, will outline the steps that, that um, might follow from this, but actually it's something that can happen reasonably quickly with the support um, of the private sector. And I think this is one of the unique um, initiatives that, that can be undertaken in partnership with industry, with industry actually leading and the public sector not interfering, but supporting in terms of the work that we do to help create the demand and the traffic that's, that requires for the commercial case to be there. And I think that's, I think that's the beauty of, of where we are right now in, at this time. Again, as I've said, it feeds the virtuous circle, improves the experience of Scottish us users. We get subsequent improvements in infrastructure um, and we get better local um, infrastructure investments as well. So for us, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Thank you very much.